Hello, the purpose of this recording is to walk through some of the shared financial setup available for Microsoft Dynamics AS. I'd like to start off with our fiscal calendars. Fiscal calendars are shared in Microsoft Dynamics AX across multiple across the entire organization. Fiscal calendars are used from everything from budgeting to fixed assets to um, selecting the one calendar that's used for, for general ledger posting as well. In the fiscal calendar form, you can create new fiscal calendars. Um, for each calendar, you can create a new fiscal year. And you can also manage the periods that are for each fiscal year. You can assign them to budget cycles as well. In Microsoft Dynamics AX, the fiscal calendar periods uh, do support the ability to create multiple closing periods. The closing periods are used with the process of the closing sheet functionality at the period end. And in there, you can select which closing period to adjust. And this allows you to support uh, different adjustments into different closing periods, such as internal auditing adjustments versus external auditing adjustments. Next, I'm going to talk about currencies. Currencies in Microsoft Dynamics AX do ship out of the box based on the ISO currency code. The first time that you open up the general ledger parameters form, all of the currencies will be generated. These currencies are available across the entire organization. In the currency form, you, you can still create new or delete any currencies you don't use. Uh, one of the currencies can be set up to reference, be referenced for triangulation. In our demo data set, that is the euro currency um, that is set up to be uh, used for triangulation. You can set up your online currency conversion uh, data, whether the currency is available, where in a, in a grid you can change the accounting currency amount to be uh, based on this currency. Uh, you can set up all the rounding rules for a currency, as well as a currency gender, which is used in Spanish-speaking co uh, countries for their, their set. We've also introduced the concept of a rate type. Microsoft Dynamics AX uh, does ship with five default rate types out of the box. One is called default, one is average, budget, closing, and then there's a government rate type used for Thailand. These are just a grouping of exchange rates. So you can create as many of these rate types as you want to create, uh, giving them any name and description. Uh, you can you know, delete them as, as you, if you don't use any of these. You can navigate to the exchange rate form from any of these, or you can navigate to the currency exchange rate out of general ledger set up currency, currency exchange rate. Once you're in there, you select, a, select one of the uh, rate types, and in here you can see all of the exchange rates. Here you can enter a from and to currency. We call this a currency pair. Um, you enter the quotation unit, and this is the how the exchange rate is expressed in the number of units. So, for example, 100 would state that you're expressing in this case um, for 100 units of Canadian currency. This is how much it's meant or, or, or it equals in U.S. dollar. You can have any combination of currency pair for a rate type. Um, except for you can't have a reciprocal rate uh, type set up. In, a, in other words, if I have here, I have Canadian to US dollar, you cannot set up a US dollar to Canadian uh, currency pair for the same rate type. What we will do, if that's the, the calculation that you need, if you're in a, uh, a legal entity that uses Canadian as its accounting currency and you're transacting in the US dollar, we will first look to see if we can find a U.S. dollar to Canadian exchange rate. If we cannot find it, we will then look for Canadian to U.S. dollar. And if we find that, we'll use the reciprocal rate for that. Another thing to call out on here is this from date and to date. This is just a display 
uh, filter for the exchange rate in the form. So we'll only display by default any exchange rates that are actually valid for that for that date range, um, which means, like in this example, this one is 12-1-2008, um, yet my date range is in May to July of 2011. That just means that there isn't a newer exchange rate for this currency pair than what's entered in this data set. So it is valid for the state range. The state range doesn't um, imply that you can only enter exchange rates for that date range. It's just a filter for display. You can change the state range. Um, you can clear it so you can see all of them. The purpose of that was that we feel over time you'll get a lot of exchange rates and we just want the more current ones to display by default so we don't have to scroll through a bunch of exchange rates. Next I'm going to move on to the chart of account data. And the first thing we have are main account templates. Main account templates allow you to set up default data for the creation of new main accounts for your chart of accounts. So it'll look very similar to the data that's available for a main account. And you just set, you can give it any name you want and then set whichever of these fields that you want. The templates also can be used to roll down changes. So if you make a change to uh, any of the, the accounts and you, you want to, like, say, make those balance sheet accounts available for foreign currency revaluation, you can mark that and then roll that change down to all of the accounts that are associated to this template. From there, I'll go into the chart of accounts, and in a Microsoft Dynamics AX supports um, an unlimited number of charts of accounts. The charts of accounts can be shared across multiple legal entities, or you can create one for each legal entity. The chart of accounts does contain um, the list of main accounts for the chart, and they're managed in this little um, list within the chart of accounts. You can create new main accounts or new from template. As we said, um, if I open up a main account, for example, you'll see all of the setup that's available uh, for the main account. You'll also see on the left-hand side all of the other main accounts for that chart so you don't have to keep uh, going back and forth between the forms to, to continue to manage. You can create new or new from template from this form as well. There is a select a level of main account to display, and by default that's the chart of accounts. Um, you can change this to be a company, and then you can add your company to the list, and then you can, you'll see that additional fields become available. So I can at this point override data as well, such as um, the active from, active to, and the suspended field. I can also now set up the default financial dimensions or set up default financial statements set up, as well as uh, set up the cash flow forecast, and um, I can edit the sales tax code information as well. Also part of the ch chart of accounts are the account structures, and you can associate one or more account structures to a chart of accounts, and this will provide what the valid dimensions are for this ledger account. Uh, the only difference is, is you cannot uh, uh, have the ma same main account uh, referenced by multiple account structures for the same chart of accounts, you will get an error that you have some overlap um, there. Uh, there will be a separate video walking through the financial dimensions and the account structures that I would recommend that you uh, take a look at as well. So as once you set up the chart of accounts, add all the main accounts and select which account structures, it's almost ready to go. The final thing to go look at for setting up the shared data is the ledger. The ledger really ties everything together for a legal entity. In the ledger, it determines which chart of accounts you're using, which fiscal calendar you're using, what your accounting and reporting currencies are, and which exchange rates you're using. And you can have a different exchange rate for your actual um, data versus your budget uh, data that you're entering into the system. You can also set up some uh, currency realized and unrealized gain and loss accounts if they're the same across all the, of the ledger.
we have a couple buttons up on top. The ledger calendar is where you'll ma manage your period status from. That will pull up just the calendar for the ledger. So it's, it's filtered down to just that calendar. And for each one of the periods, if I expand the window out, you'll see that there is a period status. And from here is where you can set the periods to either on hold or close them or keep them open for one legal entity versus another legal entity. You can also uh, stop the period for a module level access at this point too at the, le the ledger level so that that allows you to um, share the calendar across multiple legal entities yet stop it for one legal entity. The other option out here is to recalculate ledger periods. Uh, one of the fields that we have in our on our general journal entries is a period code. And if you happen to change your calendar for any reason, you just need to go through here and, and recalculate the ledger periods and it'll reset the period code on the journal entry record if you know if that no longer matches up to what you have. A couple other things that i just like to point out in this video is um, one, the ledger account alias. And the ledger account alias allows you to enter in a shortcut key. So this is that ledger account alias. For example, I have TRV. And in a, if I'm in the account entry control, like in a journal entry or on a source document, and I'm entering the account number, all I have to do is if I enter TRV, it's going to automatically default with this ledger account alias definition um, for this company if I was in CEEB for example uh, this would be this main account and then any of the dimensions that I would select I can also then set what my initial focus will be so um, if I I could change it to be the next um, segment so for example that would default with this main account and then my focus would be in the second segment of the field so then I could enter the rest of the dimensions and you can set um, ledger account aliases to be shared or to be specific to a user group or to be specific to a user. Also new in uh, Microsoft Dynamics AX is how we store balances. We now use financial dimension sets, which is a grouping of dimensions, so whether it's just main account or any combination of main account and another financial dimension or just any combination of financial dimensions whatever um, however you want to store your balances that's how how we'll track our balances so you just create a new one and when you create a new one you'll have an initialize balances button which you if you initialize that it'll initialize all the balances across the organization for based on that dimension you can do things such as come in here and update your balances once in a while, or you can choose to have your balances updated during the posting process. Our, our balance update is now asynchronous, so it doesn't impact the performance of our posting. And it also depends on how often you need to look at your balances. So for maybe just main account, that might be kind of important, and so you maybe want to update that during the posting process. So maybe if you only look at like departmental balances or cost center balances once a week or once a day or once a month, you can schedule that through a batch processing. So if you choose to update balances, you can schedule through a batch process in AX and then it will automatically update those balances based on that. And these balances will be displayed in the main account list page and the trial balance list page uh, as you need to look at them. So I highly recommend that you take a look at the, the financial dimensions and account structure video next. Thank you.